What's up everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today I just wanted to share with you guys a little tip and it's something that I kind of learned about recently and I wanted to kind of save this for a separate video but it actually kind of ties along with one of my previous videos where I talked about how the stresses on the spinal disc tend to be higher in the morning and one would probably want to avoid exercise in the morning specifically if they're engaging in some sort of kind of spinal motion exercise because it's going to further stress the spinal discs when compared to the evening and that's what kind of previous research has shown and that's due to the different kind of physiological and biomechanical changes with regards to the spine itself and the discs just being more hydrated in the morning. Anyways, something you commonly hear with regards to seeing a doctor in terms of a recommendation for therapy is bed rest for someone with back pain and just continued bed rest for maybe a couple weeks not doing any exercise or physical activity whatsoever. And I want to kind of just kind of share my thoughts with regards to this and what I've learned recently with regards to this specific topic and why this kind of prescription is actually harmful for people and it actually could make individuals backs worse or make their pain worse and they may get back, back aches and they wonder why they're in more pain when they're just kind of admitted to bed rest. So. The idea with bed rest kind of ties back to the diurnal changes associated with the spine. So when we're laying in bed consistently, we're not compressing our spine, so we're in a decompressive state. So what ends up happening is that as we do this over a long period of time, without kind of moving around or maybe walking or whatnot or getting up to cause any compression, the idea is the discs will stay in that fully hydrated state. And so since the discs are kind of in that fully hydrated state, and when they stay in this state for longer than eight hours, we may get some stress or further stress is associated on the vertebrae or the spinal discs themselves. And specifically someone with maybe a bulging or herniated disc, this could significantly impact them if they continuously stay in this state for a prolonged period of time for weeks without doing kind of any physical activity and they just kind of stay in bed. Maybe they get up to go to the washroom, but that's about it. It's kind of the only maybe compressive activity they may be doing on their spine. But the point being is that staying in the static position for a long period of time may not allow for the transport of nutrients into the spinal discs to occur efficiently. So guys, the problem occurs is that when you're in the static position for a long period of time, for eight hours or more, you're not gonna allow for the proper kind of transport of nutrients into and out of the disc, which in the case of someone with a herniated or bulging disc, this could be problematic because this could maybe lead to someone having a backache because now they're not getting the nutrients into the disc. Proper healing may not occur, and that's how someone may get pain, the onset of pain, or they may get some sort of backache because they're laying in that static position. The discs are being kind of more stressed, and they're not moving around, or they're not kind of getting up and engaging in kind of any kind of compressive activity to allow for the proper expulsion of those fluids and to kind of get the disc back to its kind of normal height uh, when doing kind of normal daily activities because the discs do not like to bend when they're fully hydrated and the discs tend to be more susceptible to stress. So that's just kind of one reason, but at the same time when we admit someone to bed rest, just bed rest specifically, keep in mind no exercise, keep in mind a lot of the spinal stabilizer muscles will become weaker, they will have muscle atrophy occurring where they're just kind of diminishing or becoming smaller. We don't have that same stabilization or same strength to make kind of stabilize our spine. And we could look to the research regarding astronauts. So this is where a lot of kind of the information regarding kind of low back pain and bed rest and all that is kind of coming from, is a lot of it's coming from prolonged space travel where astronauts are in space for a prolonged period of time. And they're not in compressive activities and they're not engaging in compressive activities. And so what you'll see is a lot of these astronauts, when they come back, is that they end up having a lot of lower back problems or lower back pain because they're not used to that compressive activity or they're not used to gravity on Earth here because they were in that kind of space travel position for a long period of time. So being in that space travel, being in that decompressive kind of environment for that long period of time, now one could apply that to bed rest where you're in that decompressive state. If one were to assume that state over a long period of time, we can kind of see where the connection is occurring and why people who, are pro or who have been in a position of prolonged uh, bed rest or have been prescribed this, we wonder why these individuals may get worse and they may get more problems with regards to their back pain. So I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, I thought it was something interesting that I learned recently and this is coming out of kind of McGill's work but also a lot of the research just regarding astronauts 
pre kind of space travel and post space travel to see kind of the differences within their spines and how and why they basically, a lot of these individuals, these astronauts, end up coming back to Earth with a lot of lower back pain because they're just not used to that gravity. And at the same time, you know, a lot of those muscles, a lot of those stabilizers aren't working the same way. But there's also the issue with the spinal discs where they are in their fully hydrated position. They're not kind of, and they're in that kind of static position where they're fully hydrated and not engaging in that normal compressive activity that may allow for that normal transportation of nutrients into and out of the disc. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because when it comes to prescribing bed rest, I'm not saying bed rest is bad or anything. It's just when you're just doing bed rest strictly and you're not doing any physical activity, you're just kind of laying in a bed for 72 hours, maybe for a whole week, maybe for a whole month, and the only kind of activity you're doing is to get up to go to the washroom to eat your meals, that's when it can be, become problematic. So I just wanted to share that with you guys though. I thought it was interesting. Now, I thought about actually doing some research reviews with regards to some of the research I kind of reviewed and went over. If you guys would like me to actually do research reviews for a lot of these articles, I will be happy to do them. And I could do some separate videos here in the future just to kind of share with you guys some of the information. Or if maybe if you just want to kind of see the research for yourself, I'll post the, some of the articles and the kind of research journals in the description below for you guys just to check out if you're interested, just to kind of read up for yourself. But if you have any questions, and maybe if you're someone that actually was prescribed just bed rest, and you ended up getting worse, or maybe you ended up getting better. Love to hear your story, love to hear how that went for you, or maybe if this is uh, some, something that you just kind of learned for the first time, you didn't know about that, I just kind of love to hear your thoughts as well. All right guys, so that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I wish you guys all the best, and take care.